This soup is out the park. Rich, creamy, delicious, satisfying, ticks all the boxes and incredibly easy to make. If you're doing the soup and juice me plan, it appears on day one and it's going to get you in the mood for soup for the rest of the week. It's butternut squash and carrot. So have a wild stab in the dark what two of the ingredients just may be. Butternut squash, clearly, and carrots. What we're doing here is making enough for two. Now you might go, well, I'm doing the plan by myself. If you're doing the soup, or oh, juice yourself slim, that's what the book's called. If you're doing it by yourself, you'll notice that during the day, people aren't really with you when it comes to juices. They're eating their other stuff and lunches and having their cappuccinos and whatever else. But when you start to make soup at night, they're all say, oh, can I just nick a bit? Can I just nick a bit? And so the idea with this is to make enough for two, just to allow for that. Equally though, if you're gonna go through this amount of effort to make a beautiful soup, they freeze beautifully. And you don't lose any of the nutrients when you're freezing either. But you can, if you just think, no, I only wanna make enough for one at this time, you can clearly do that. Halve the ingredients from the recipes. Butternut squash. Now, for those that are kind of fruit and vegetable illiterate, and I'm saying that because I was myself. Sometimes you get something, you don't really know what to do with it. Some people go into a supermarket and they're a, or a farmer's market and they're a bit scared. They go, I don't know what it is. I'm not going anywhere near it. Uh, butternut squash, it's a fruit, beautiful. When it's in chunks, in a soup, it just makes it rich and creamy and delicious. Loaded with minerals. You've got potassium in there. You've got iron in there. You've got magnesium in there, manganese. This thing is, is you know, we're making... A delicious soup, yes, but like everything we do is also nutritious and delicious. That has been overused somewhat, that term. I'm aware of that. You want about half. Now, what we're looking for, the bottom half here tends to be quite hollow. Think of a pumpkin, really. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the half from this end. So I would say about there, cut that down. What you'll notice, you need a really sharp knife because butternut squash is pretty tough, to say the least. I would, I would just, ta just take the tail off there as well. Put that to one side in the bin. Now, in order to peel, you can try with a potato peeler, but it's so hard, this is gonna knack your potato peeler. So what I would do is I would just use the knife and I would just go down the sides and all you wanna do is just take away the outer layer around the side. Very simple, very straightforward. We're filming this, it's coming up to lunchtime. Kid you not, it's like almost perfect timing. And I already know what I'm gonna be having for lunch, there's no question. Uh, butternut squash and carrot. Like I said, loaded with nutrients. That's all you do. Put that to one side, just put that in the bin over there. Happy days. And now what you do is just, you want to chunk this. This is a smooth soup. In the end, it's just going to be smooth. You can always drink it from a cup anyway. So we're not making a chunky soup. However, you just want to make it so that at least it sweats down properly. So you want to do it in chunks. Now again, you'll notice that my cutting skills are not like Jamie Oliver's. Uh, other chefs are available, I understand. Um, and you see them, you know, hats off to Jamie and gang when you see, you know, I'm a realist in the kitchen because I didn't go to chef school and you won't be seeing me doing any of that. I've just got to point that out. That's not going to be happening. But the idea, look, you know, is just to chunk this baby like this, chunk that down, all the way. mind your fingers, always mind your fingers, chunk that down and then literally well, the idea is to go the other way. You can see I'm no chef, can't you? Anyway, the idea is you just want to put this in chunks. I've made a little bit of a mess of this at the moment, but it's all good. Um, as you no doubt will in the kitchen. In fact, some of you are saying, no, I won't, because I'm an expert at this stuff, Jason. Uh, just cut that down. You, want to, it, you get the idea. You just want to put it in chunks, really. That's all you're looking to do. And I've made a real, as they say, pig's ear of this. Uh, normally, I'm slightly better than this. We just want to chunk it. There you go. So you've got that prepared to go in the pan. Now you want to prepare your carrots and your onion into chunks too. Carrots though, what you want to do is you want to, you want to peel them. Top and tail them. Let's do all three together kind of thing. Top and tail. Top and tail. And now we're going to peel, but I would use the peeler for this. There's no question. I would use a peeler. Let's go down, obviously, and just peel the carrots. There's, there's nothing like good preparation. You get the idea, people. And again, what we're going to do is just chunk them. That's all we're going to do, chunk them, three carrots at a time. Hopefully, I'll have more success with these than I did the butternut squash. <laughs> uh, just chunk these. Again, soups, you know, it's one of these things that people are unsure about soups. You may never have made a soup in your life. You might be one of those. It's so simple to make. Anybody can make a soup, and it's a bit like juicing. You had different combinations and pretty much most of the time, if you stick to key principles, that it kind of always turns out pretty much okay, really. Uh, onion, red onion. Cut the onion in half, it just gives you more corners. You sometimes take away some of the onion, which you don't mean to. When it comes to um, onions, I might get a little bit teary. 
might get a little bit teary. Red onions, of course, are nowhere near as severe as white onions when it comes to that. Whenever I see cooking programs, always comes off in one. I don't know how they manage to do that somehow, but they do. And again, we're just going to chop. So I just tend to cut them into strips as such. <laughs> and then I just kind of cut them up on the board like that. Crying already. This is going to go into small pieces. You know, with soups, really, you always want to add and sweat down a little bit of onion. Look at this. I'm actually crying. Oh, my good God. Once everything is chopped, turn on the hob, put it onto a, a medium heat. And then what we're going to do is put a tablespoon of oil, pop that in, and we're going to add a little bit of crushed pepper, just a nice little pinch going on there. You want to just whiz that round. Just make sure we spread that around a bit, heat that up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add all of the veggies. Add the veggies going in, carrots, butternut squash. And what we're going to do is we're going to sweat these, what they call sweat them down for 15 minutes. So on a medium heat, we're just going to put these in, all the ingredients, pop the lid on, and you want to make sure that we stir that occasionally, I would say every kind of four or five minutes roughly, just for 15 minutes, and that will be beautiful and ready. In the meantime, let's get our stock prepared, really simple. You want a good quality stock cube, get some boiling water, this kettle's just boiled. You want, for this recipe, to one stock cube, you want a pint of water. Pint for me, I know what that means. I mean, I grew up in the UK, you know, that's all we ever drank, we drank pints, didn't have litres of stuff. Anyway, make sure we stir that in, just dissolve that nicely while that's sweating out. Your stock's ready to go. What we're going to do, like I said, is just revisit this every kind of four or five minutes. Just check that everything's kind of going according to plan. Sweating down. Again, it takes 15 minutes. That's fine. That's cooking away nicely in there. Revisit that again. Okay, let's have a look at that. 15 minutes in, that has sweated down beautifully. Look at that. All we do now, very simple, we get our stock, get a little stir there as well, find a little stir, and just pour in the stock. And then what we want to do, very simple, with the lid on, we want to bring it to the boil, so turn it to the highest heat, bring that to the boil. It should literally take less than a minute for that to come up to the boil. There she blows, there she's bubbling. Now we're just going to bring this down to a simmer. So all we want to do is just simmer this now, which really is about a number two. Depends on your hob, clearly, but it's about number two on this, and we're just going to simmer that. I just like to... Do you ever have this habit of just stirring? I like stirring. Whenever I'm cooking it, it just keeps stirring. It makes you feel like you're doing something, even if it's not necessary. We are now going to just simmer that for 10 minutes, and again, we're just going to stir occasionally. That's been simmering beautifully for 10 minutes, and they are now ready to blend. That is looking amazing. Now, I'm using a hand blender here. You are perfectly welcome. If you have a normal upright blender, you would literally pour all of that into your upright blender, turn it on, blend it until smooth, your soup is ready. I love the hand blender. I'm a big fan of it. Um, so the idea is just go like this and blend it up. This will take a few minutes. And the idea is just to put it on a little angle if you've got one of these, so you don't want to go flat down. And then the idea, and then all the vegetables come underneath. And look how creamy that's getting now. And that is just about perfect. The magic of editing is if it was done in 10 seconds. Don't you love it? Look at that beautiful, rich, creamy, delicious. Grab a bowl. And these, by the way, I am loving these little bowls. I kid you not. I found them yesterday before filming, and I was just a little bit excited about them. Uh, I do get excited about the small things in life. Take a ladle, I just, I like the name, or a spoon, and we just pour this, and look how rich and thick that is. Loaded with vitamins, loaded with minerals, and do you know what, if you're actually doing the soup and juice me plan, you know, I know that some people on juice only plans, I know that some people can struggle here and there, particularly over the first two, three days during the, do you know what though, on this plan, the feedback that I get time and time again is that people just don't Struggle, look at this, beautiful. And what I would do is I would add, oh, that's nice. I would add another small pinch of pepper. Just going on there. Look at that, just to finish that baby off. You can add a bit of salt there if you want. A 
little bit. It's up to you really, but do you know what? I just like to keep it as pure as we can during the seven day program. That's, out, that's just stupid. And what I love about, you know, there's not even any dairy in it. There's nothing bad in it at all. We've literally just taken three simple ingredients, really. You know, you've got some butternut squash, got some red onion, got some carrot, added a bit of stock, that's all we've done, bit of pepper, tiny bit of oil, and all of a sudden you produced, oh, it's so ridiculously nice. Um, that's my lunch, uh, without a doubt. That is the butternut squash and carrot soup uh, that appears on day one of the soup and juice me plan, even if you're not doing the plan. Go and get those three simple ingredients, get your pan out, follow the recipe that we've just filmed, and make this bad boy. Hope your chopping's better than mine. Cheers. Mmm. Oh, peoples, seriously, that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs>